Hi, my name is Courtney and I'm the Growth Marketer at Follow Up CRM. Welcome to part three of our three-part video series where I share some helpful insights on how to run a successful sales meeting. At this point of the video series, you receive tips on how to best prepare for the sales meetings and watch the visual example of the Vice President of Sales lead a sales meeting in this video, you'll see all the team members go around and follow that same agenda following the format mentioned in our previous videos, where we touch on wins from last week, leads, bids, pipeline, contracts, to-dos for the week, and hurdles. That's about your world. How are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> I hope you all have a really nice day. And for marketing, you always ask 
comes in to get with you and I have a good lead with 500 week sprinkle that we can follow up with them to change property manager. That's a $700,000 job that we're this close to get. So I will get with you. So thank you. Have a wonderful week. <laughs> I'm trying to keep on top of 
Well, I was just asking this question. What are you doing with that Western job? I have no idea. I don't know what you're talking about. So we got so much stuff coming in. I try to keep a list of what I've got. Um, but um, there's a lot of stuff in there to be taken off. I, is, uh, I wonder if uh, Nelson's back this week. So I guess that's under control as well. But it's all good. It's all good. I, I, I'm more concerned about what we were talking about with Dale and backlog and do, do some drop off. Of course they will if it's two, three months out. Well, I can't stress to everybody enough, but now is the time to, even after you sell a job, stay in touch with your client. Let them know where you're at. You know, you're, you're the first part of the experience of best roofing with them. And if they have to wait a month or two to receive a phone call from operations because they're that backed up in work, that's uh, the easiest way to damage a reputation. For sure. Um, you know, there's always Casey who brings in a couple of contracts throughout the month, which is always helpful from helpful from his existing clients that can directly from service. So I know Casey's gonna get a, a nice one this month called Valencia Palms, and I know he has a couple other things in the pipeline. And uh, it was it was cool because we got to once we submitted the bids, we got to see you know how we did on our bid, and man, it was so close. Um, and we came in as low bidder, but you know we didn't leave much on the table, and that's 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 really the goal when you know when it comes to an estimate. Not you know there's always going to be other people that are bidding on your job, but if you can keep them real close, and you're not a hundred grand short, and you're like oh shit, what did I miss? You know, so that was um, that was encouraging. Um, nice Brian, job, Isaac. Yeah, Good welcome job. back, Brian. Thank you, thank you. We missed you last week. Um, do you want to talk to us a little about the estimating world or, or maybe get some yeah. information from your boys? Well, let me, do you remember? Let me say that <laughs> um, we got a successful estimating team, and behind the successful estimating team is Lynn Fletcher. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Lynn is the one who keeps it together. She keeps the calendar together. She keeps us on track. Uh, she told us what things we should do and we don't do it. <laughs> but it's good to have an input. <laughs> so she does make sure it gets done. <laughs> uh, yeah, she does a fantastic job. Thank you, Lynn. Okay. Excellent. Um, according to Lynn, we've got <laughs> we've got 29 estimates in front of us and this week we've got nine slots available. So we've probably got two weeks of work um, already, and then she's got a huge pile of takeoffs to do, so we are slammed, um, which means the sales guys need to just check priorities and make sure that we're on track. Well, you've got 11 estimates in already. That's without the takeoffs coming up, so, and you are our top priority guy, because these other two bricks, we don't really care about that much. <laughs> <laughs> <I'm sorry. laughs> Um, so have a look at the calendar, make sure we got it in the right order of priority or if things change, come and tell us so that we can get your estimates out there and they should be done. Thank you, estimators, for doing a tremendous job. Um, that's all we have. So hope everyone enjoyed the weekend. Uh, it's nice having four days, that's for sure. But we probably could use one more. <laughs> <laughs> uh, right, so for the month, we have uh, 194 contracts. Um, we are at $762,000. So we're about 12,000 above goal, which is awesome. This time of year. Uh, $240,000 in contracts, so again, yeah. uh, Bird's right behind him with 120. Um, yeah, so Bird has about 80,000 lined up for next month. Too. Yeah. Um, Michael Jacobson's not here, he'll be back on Wednesday. He's at 110, which is great. So, it's a thousand above. Craig, you've been doing a great job, consistent. Um, you're about a thousand dollars short for your goal this month. Do you think you can hit that? We have a conversation with Randy today. I think we can wrap up those uh, 
You guys change okay. orders, which will get you where you need to be. Um, will, I'm $28,000 short. What do you think you got coming in, or you think we're just gonna be a little short? Um, I'm gonna be a little short just because of uh, timing yeah. of uh, jobs. Right. But um, I do have some things that should be coming. All right, so for the month of December, where do you think you're gonna be? Do you think you're gonna hit goal for the month of December? I think so. Okay. Um, Jordan is about $14,000 short. I think I heard some rumblings that he has a couple things that are gonna be signed today. Um, I'm just gonna go through you guys, just make sure everyone's kind of, you know, what we're anticipating for the month of December. Uh, Norman says he's, he's on board for uh, somewhere between 200 and 250, which is great. Bert, do you think you're gonna hit 100? Uh, I'll probably do 120. I'm gonna put you down for 120 then. Um, Craig, what do you think? You think you hit 80? Michael Jacobson, I'm gonna put him down for a hundred. It's not here, I think it's West Coast. <laughs> <laughs> it's not here, right. um, Will, you think you're gonna hit goal? No. Um, and then I think I have 50 or so laying around that I could probably slam in there as well. So, I mean, we should have a pretty decent December as well. Great. So, I just wanna thank everybody for their efforts. I know this is not easy. This has been a long run this year, stressful and, um, it will take a little dip so you guys can catch up, take a breath, um, enjoy it for a second, and then start wondering where the leads are. While we're still on the subject of sales, especially with the two of you, closing ratio, it's a percentage based upon how good these guys do it, right. both on a construction side and on a service side. Right. What is the closing ratio for construction? When I came into this department and January, February, we were around a 26 to 27 percent closing ratio. Now it's measured two different ways. There's to the to the touch, which is how many proposals we send out, and then it's to the dollar. Today we're about 32 percent on our closing ratio, which is incredible. That means you know pretty much for every 10, every 10 you're going to get you know three, maybe four back. Guys, hear that again. For every 10 proposals that go out, we will actually close three and a half, almost four of those proposals. That's huge. The service side, what is the number? Right now we're at 58. Um, we started the year, Greg asked, you know, what some of the goals that we wanted to you know, kind of increase this year or, or make better than last year. Um, so of course, as soon as I said that I wanted our closing ratio to get to 60, we did a nice clean and follow up and dead in a bunch of files, and now it went, it went down to 53, now we're up to 58. So I think, you know, in all reality, I think we have a, a much cleaner, more true pipeline, um, and I think that that 60 to 62% uh, ratio will probably be in line for next year. Okay, stay on that, because where you just led us verbally is where I wanted to go, right. especially with follow-up here. Got it. Because when I moved from one department to another department and had more sales responsibility, I've heard about these closing ratios. Now remember, within the pipeline, you have all of the business we are actually discussing. But within the totality of the business, you've got hots, you've got warms, you've got to be decided, and you've got uh, maybe a year from now. Well, what happened is I'm looking at these hots, and the number was enormous, and Greg's counting on one in three out of the hot from construction. And yet at the same time, we're not seeing this thing. And so I encourage the team, I go, guys, make sure those hots are hots. Make sure those warms are warms. And we probably had three weeks worth of dialogue on that very subject. You know what happened? We said goodbye to $10 million worth of hots. And I'll never forget, because Greg called me and said, there's been an adjustment in the hots. I said, I asked these guys to clean their pipeline and we did, but I now think we have true numbers. And it was an adjustment. It's almost like notching your belt a couple of times over. Now, add to the reality of HOTS, add to the reality of pipeline, and now remember this. Most businesses, not fiscal year, that's how I used to do business because of the business I was in, calendar year. Calendar year means they've already budgeted and said, hey, we're gonna have to spend $2 million on our roof this year. And now it's getting close to the end of the year. A lot of your phone conversations with clients are gonna to have to do with, they've already made a decision. 
They have to spend that money. And it's an accounting frustration if you have to move what were planned expenditures for 2020 into 21, uh, 2021. Why? Because in so many of these businesses that we deal with, they actually have to get approval. It's a meeting. Hey, we didn't buy a roof this year. We're going to buy a roof next year. And that's why some of these guys are calling us now going, hey, I need, I need to spend this money before the year is over because if I don't spend it, I don't know if I'll have it next year. So keep that in the back of your mind when you're having conversation because it all has to do with the close ratio, what is in a hut, and these clients of ours, many of them, actually have to make a decision. Over to uh, marketing, whoever wants to jump in first. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. morning. Well, last week was really short, and we can see that on the leads. We have uh, seven construction leads and 49 on service. So I guess we have to like, work extra hard to get you know, hit the goal. But uh, about what you were talking about, Ian, we want to be part of like helping you guys with uh, alleviating pressure of like having so much of that backlog because um, we have a lot of people that have contacted us because they are a little bit upset that we're not there right away. So if in any way we can help you to like maybe visit them or like, you know, try to like, like it make it easier while we actually get to them. Please let us know. We are like uh, having a few events, not as many as we would like because of the COVID outbreak again, and like many events canceled. We have a few that are still on, so we have time to go to your clients and deliver anything that you need us to help you with and get information for, for you. So please just let us know. We're just like an email, phone call away, and we're more than happy to help you with anything that we can do. I think one of the biggest things that we can do right now is just be honest. You know, mm -hmm. um, you know, we're three, three and a half weeks out of service, and you know, people are going to call you and want you to pull a string. We don't have much more string to pull. It's um, we are max to the gills. Um, you know, as Dale was talking about earlier, we have a labor constraint. You know, um, we have you know twenty five crews. I mean, we have I think we're twenty seven trucks in the actual lot. We're working to fill those trucks. Um, I wish we would have done that a little earlier in the year, but um, this business is always a function of what's sold versus labor, and sometimes they get out of whack. Right now, we're on this on the sales side of it, which causes the labor constraint, which makes your job a little bit more frustrating when clients are writing semi nasty emails about you know unacceptability and this is crap and you know all that stuff. So I would just say. Be honest, understand we're three, three and a half weeks out, and we're gonna do our best, and understand that Christmas is coming up. And that's gonna be another, you know, another subtle week away. Okay. So I, I would just say, just tell the truth. Mm -hmm. Line expectations, everything. Absolutely. More marketing? Uh, no, besides that, we have, like, like I said, a few events coming up, a few classes. If you guys have any, like, property management company you want us to, like, offer the classes, please let us know. We'll be happy to get everything set up for them. Yeah, last week I asked you guys for lists of keywords. Today, that'd be great. If not, I, I'm sorry to say we'll probably miss them. Ken, is there anything else you'd add on the Christmas uh, gift conversation? Okay, when it comes to Christmas and the holiday spirit and how we're doing what we're doing as a company, um, Greg and I met last week and we talked through how awkward it is in this COVID environment to kind of recreate <coughs> at Thanksgiving and get everybody together for a meal. So we kind of concluded that every department head will take responsibility to do something special with their own team but there will not be a Christmas party if that was to the phrase that you use, you know, but for, for two reasons. One, the restrictions through COVID, but then two, it comes this time of year and things start to slow here and people start to go away and pretty soon you finally have a party for a whole pile of people and not everybody can show up because everybody made plans and you're gonna expect somebody to stay just for the Christmas party. So officially, it'll be your department head's decision as to how your group celebrates Christmas. Um, did that include Secret Santa? Uh, no, I don't know. That would be another COVID issue. Just it would be. Yeah. yeah, we'll have to let you know in an email, but I'm letting you know verbally. Right now, we were going to have, you know, a, a, a elf on a shelf, but it was going to be Jake. And we were gonna, there were some fun things we had planned, and it's kind of like, you know, this is not working because of contact and because of visibility and because of what you're trying to do within the company. 
while you're still trying to have a holiday spirit. So we're optimistic that you guys can still celebrate in your own way and have a really good time. Yeah, Diana, Diana, please. I am sorry. I just want to like really make it clear. Please be careful. There has to be some because you still have to make the baskets. We have to mark them. We have to deliver them for two of us. And it's been like a hundred clients. It's going to take a while. We want to be sure that by Christmas, they have their baskets. So please be sure to send that to us. It's really important. Yeah, we made the decision rather than to buy, you know, pre-made baskets to kind of build them on our own. We bought some bulk things, and now we're creating them with our swag. So somebody get a nice basket. It'll have some of our stuff in it, along with some chocolates and different things that we're accustomed to getting. But because they're putting them together, guys, give them a hand and uh, make sure that they... Well, I don't, you can give a hand. Yeah, you can give a hand. Give a hand. <laughs> Getting them the list because we're going to see where the duplicates are Different. and the overage to be able to get to our goal. Yes, Keanu. Just so we're clear, where is the list of? Pardon me? Where, where is 